Hey, what's going on YouTube family? This is your man Pristine back with another video. Yes, I've got another unboxing for you. LG is back with another brand new device. You may not have heard much about it because it just kind of came out of nowhere. This is my LG G7 ThinQ. What LG did was they took some of the most notable features from this phone and they decided to put it in this phone. This is the brand new LG Q7 Plus. This is another phone that LG has just recently released very quietly and it falls under the mid-range category. Um, so here to unbox it for you. So without further ado, let's crack this box. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and get this box cracked open real quick. Now, really quickly, before I do that, I just want to run down the spec list just to give you guys an idea of what we're dealing with here. Um, you may notice the little pink T-Mobile sticker right there. Why is that there? Because this is a T-Mobile exclusive device. I haven't seen this device sold at any other carrier. Um, I'm not sure if you can get it on online, like Amazon or anything like that. Um, so far, I've just seen it at at, at, uh, at, at your local T-Mobile store. And so you can get it at T-Mobile or you can get it on T-Mobile's website. All right. All right. So starting off with the display, we've got a 5.5 inch 1080p by 2160 pixel full HD plus display. This is an LCD screen type. We've got a 439 PPI pixel density. We've got an 18 by nine aspect ratio. We do not have a notch. And so if you are not a big fan of the notch action, then this may be a mid ranger that you may wanna take a look at, okay? Now we are running a Snapdragon 450 processor. And I know that some people are kind of scratching their heads about that particular fact alone. They're like, okay, this phone is, it's being marketed as a mid-range device, and it's being sold for 350 bucks, but it's got a Snapdragon 450 processor in it. Is that necessarily a bad thing? It's yet to be seen. You know, that's yet to be determined. You know, we'll, we'll definitely see in the coming weeks. Um, I personally would have would have liked to have seen uh, uh, um, anywhere between a Snapdragon 625 up to a Snapdragon 630 or a Snapdragon 636 in this particular phone, considering that it's being marketed as a mid-range, but for whatever reason, LG decided to go with the Snapdragon 450, okay? We've got four gigs of RAM on board. We've got 64 gigs of onboard storage that can be expanded up to 2,000 uh, gigabytes, um, which is two terabytes. We are running Android 8.1 Oreo fresh out of the box. Now, the camera system, okay? On the rear, we've got a 16 megapixel primary camera. We do not have dual lenses. And on the front, we have a front-facing 8 megapixel sensor. All right, we've got a 3,000 milliamp hour non-removable battery. We do have Type C reversible connecting, um, uh, a Type C reversible connector. My apologies, um, and we do have fast wireless charging supported. Now, the only colors that you can get this in is Moroccan blue, which is the color that this is, and you'll see that once I crack it out of the box here. We do have Bluetooth 4.2. We do have NFC. We do have the 32-bit Hi-Fi quad DAC that is in the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So yes, that is present and that is a very, very welcomed feature. We do also have the DTS-X surround sound as well, just as a complimentary to the 32-bit Hi-Fi quad DAC. So basically the same audio quality that you're getting in the LG G7 Thin Q here, you're also getting in the LG Q7 Plus here just for a much, much steeper price tag. And so, you know, hey, when I say some of the most notable features, when you're talking about audio, the same technology that's here is also here. That is that is that is magnificent. All right, we do have IP68 water and dust resistance. We've got a fingerprint sensor. We've got facial recognition, and we have uh, AI capabilities with Q lens in the camera. So if you're uh, looking up landmarks or searching for things to buy or whatever, then you've got QLens as a, as, a, as, a, as a sort of a companion to help you find what it is that you're looking for. All right, so that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for the actual specs. Now let's take a peek at the box. I mean, just typical LG setup, plain black box, T-Mobile on the side, LG, Life's Good logo on the top there. Here's just our serial number and all that stuff. Here is uh, the box where we've got the DTX, uh, sound, LG Gate, Qualcomm, Snapdragon, 
and then on the back of the device uh, or on the box here is just a bunch of things that I can't read because I'm not gonna strain my eyes to try to um, and here's the unboxing knife let's cut into this bad boy shall we Boom. Uh, all right all right here we go and as always it is nice to get a microfiber cleaning cloth if you're not really too familiar with how LG gets down they put one of these in a lot of the devices of lately which is cool because a lot of their devices are fingerprint magnets and so it's good that LG recognizes that they want to put a little something in the box for you to help keep your keep your joint clean all right I can appreciate that boom all right now here's the device so here we'll go ahead and take this plastic off Okay, get that out of here. So here's that, oh man, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. So this is that Moroccan blue that I was telling you guys about. Let's go ahead and peel these stickers off here so you guys can get the full effect of this beauty here in the LG Q7 Plus. If I can go ahead and get my fingernail up under this joint here. All right, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous, wow. And then you just see it's just black along the face. We'll go ahead and set the phone aside momentarily here. All right. And serial number, IEMI information, all that jazz. Okay. Quick start guide, LG Q7 Plus, T-Mobile. Here's the SIM card, which I I've asked them not to activate because my T-Mobile SIM card is right here. So I'll pop that in there in a little bit here. Here is our fast charging brick. And here is our USB to type C. You guys can see that wall adapter right there. And what else do we have here? And here is our SIM ejection pin. All right, pretty interesting looking SIM ejector pin. All right, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and power this device on. And see so if we got some juice in it, and it appears as though we do. Again, 5.5 inches corner to corner. Here's our front eight megapixel sensor. Here is our, our ear receiver, LED light right there for notifications. And so I believe that that blinks different lights, uh, different colors, depending on the type of notification that you may get. And as you can see, LG Q7 Plus powered by Android. Now we do have a little bit of a chin at the bottom. We don't have any buttons down there or anything. Everything is gonna be capacitive on the screen. Um, so why couldn't they have given us a little bit more screen real estate there? You know, who knows? But again, I'm not tripping because you get a nice 5.5 inch display and this phone is very small. I mean, this phone is like the size of a device that's like 5.2 inches. And so you can see, I mean, I've got very small hands, but God, I mean, it's the phone is nice and lightweight, very easy to navigate. As you can see, there's that there's that beautiful 5.5 inch display there, that beautiful T-Mobile pink or magenta color, as as people refer to it as. I'm just like, hey, it's pink. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's pink, yo. Pink is pink. Um, but nonetheless, magenta right there. So there's your demonstration of that full 5.5 18 by 9 aspect ratio. Again, no notch. Now, to the right of the device, you've got nothing but the power button, and there is no rigidity, interestingly enough, on that particular button. Maybe it's just because it's the only button that's on the right side, so you're not having to fumble back and forth between the power button and the volume rockers. Um, and then we've got a little antenna line right here by my thumb, if you guys can see that. All right. Now, at the top of the device, we've got another antenna line right here, noise-canceling microphone, another antenna line there, and then it's clean. On the left side of the device is where a lot of the action is. We've got another antenna line there, volume rockers up and down. Here is our, zim, our semi uh, Jesus, our sim ejection tray, along with the tray for our SD card slot for memory expansion. Okay. Now on the bottom of the device here, here is our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that is also housing that 32-bit Hi-Fi quad DAC. Got another antenna line there. Here's our Type C port for charging. Another little uh, noise canceling microphone right here. And then here is our bottom firing speaker for sound. And 
And let's see, so moving around to the back of the device, you see we've got the LG logo right there, Q7 Plus logo right there as well in the middle of the device. Here is our rear mounted fingerprint sensor, dual tone LED flash, and then here is our dedicated primary 16 megapixel sensor. So, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to go through the setup real quick and just take it to the home screen. We'll poke around a little bit with the software, take a peek under the settings, take a peek and see exactly how much blow wears on this device, see exactly how many gigs we're rocking out of the box, and um, we'll move on from there. All right? All right. You guys hold it down. All right, Charles. So we back in. So now we are at the home screen for the LG Q7 Plus. I haven't put any of my applications on this device, and so I purposely did this just so that we can go into the phone and kind of look at the amount of gigs that you've got, see exactly how much bloatware is on this particular device. And so far, I'm not really seeing much. I mean, you know, I see we've got, of course, you know, this is the T-Mobile of, of <laughs> T-Mobile phone. I mean, so of course, there's going to be T-Mobile applications there. Um, but aside from that, I mean, well, we've got Facebook, you know, it's an LG phone. I mean, so we've got some LG essentials here. Um, actually that's just typical stuff that comes on the phone. Contacts, clock, calendar, music, calculator, audio recorder, and, um, next radio. And so we do have an FM radio on board as well. Um, so not a whole lot of bloatware on this particular device. Now, Really quickly, let's just pop into settings, okay, and let's go over to general, and again, I'm a huge fan of this particular setup, and look, let me go ahead and, for one, cut the adaptive brightness off, and cut the brightness down just a smidge to like, maybe 30%, there we go, just so that you guys can see that there. All right, so we're going to go down to about phone and software. And pardon me, you guys, for the noise in the background. It's a hot summer day. It's hot as an inferno inside of my house, and so I've got a little fan burning behind me. Plus, when I'm recording these videos, I'm under these very bright lights, and so I'm sure these lights are contributing to the heat that's around me. So um, my, my bad for the little noise, if you guys can hear that, but I've got the fan going behind me. But here you can see right here, there's confirmation that we are running Android 8.1 fresh out of the box. You can see we've got the June 1st, 2018 security patch right there. Okay. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. And so here is the amount of storage that we have. And you can see there, there's 23% of the storage that's been used. I mean, so out of this 64 gigs, 14.33 gigabytes have been utilized all due to the applications that came preloaded on the device, which leaves us with 49.17 gigabytes free. And as I mentioned, the storage is expandable up to two terabytes. And so thankfully you can expand that with an SD card. Okay. Now, really quickly back to the home screen. Um, when you scroll hard to the right, you do have your Google now, which this provides me with tons of information. And it seems to be just a little choppy. I know that I've got some things uh, downloading in the background, so I'm pretty sure that that's contributing to some of that stuttering that you see there. Um, my, I'm, I'm hoping that this device um, isn't as stuttery like that uh, once I'm done updating some of these applications that are on this particular device. But nonetheless, just wanted to show you guys that, that when you do swipe hard to the right, that brings up your Google Now. Now, you can turn that off. That is optional. Um, we do have the ability to change the button configuration, and I've already done that. There's prompts and things that take place once you turn this phone on just to kind of make it easier for you. So I've already taken advantage, advantage of that. Um, and this is typically how I like for my button setup to be, considering that I hold all of my devices pretty much in my right hand. Um, and it's just very easy for me to navigate with my thumb here. And so, yeah, we've got the back, um, back home capture key and recents. And so if I want to take a screenshot, then it's just a click of a button. I think that that's very convenient just to have it right there in the navigation bar. Um, again, when you scroll down, that's going to get you to a lot of your notifications. And then if you want to get to all of your quick toggles, then you just scroll down again for the second time and that will access all of this stuff. And so you can see here 
that we do have NFC present right there. Here's our DTSX surround sound. Here is our Hi-Fi quad DAC, and that all comes alive once you plug into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there. And so once you do, then you can be, you'll be able to access the DAC and you can get in and there's all kinds of different equalizer settings, uh, audio presets, um, you know, you can customize the sound, you know, just how you want it to sound. Um, you can just tweak pretty much everything. And so it just gives you complete command and complete control over your audio experience. And I'm a huge, huge fan of that. All right. Now, if we pop into the settings again, um, I like the fact that with LG devices, this is one of my favorite features about LG devices, is you have the option to have it in list view, which is this is the list, which is the more conventional Android uh, uh, um, settings aspect. Or you can go ahead and put it in tab view, which I am a major fan of because I like the fact that you can just click on a category and all the settings underneath that particular category are going to be laid out for you right here. Okay, so I am a huge, huge fan of that. Now, if we go to display and you click on home screen, select home, this is where you go to choose an app drawer if that's something that you want. Me, I've just got it on home, but you can see you got home or home and app drawer. So if you click home and app drawer, then you'll have an app drawer and all of these applications that are on your home screen, unless you want them there, they go away and they're just kept completely in your app drawer if you just want to free up your phone's interface. Okay, so that is one good feature and of course you know you've got wallpaper and themes change the font size here's where you can change your home buttons right here and so you can actually choose the type of color that you want the buttons to be home combination this is where you can configure your buttons right here and so it gives you a little bit of a tutorial on how to do it you can just slide these things around with your finger just to kind of change them around if you guys can see that all right and this is typically how I have my buttons oriented and so once you set them you just go ahead and hit back and get out of that and it and it saves um, and then you can also hide the home touch buttons as well so you can take fuller advantage of that 18 by 9 aspect ratio so you'll see when we uh, oh and you can that that's in certain applications and so you can choose the applications that you want that to go into effect so I can go into a certain app and the navigation buttons they'll go away but you have to choose the applications in which you want it to do that all right all right, so now let's pop into a few applications just to kind of check and see how responsive this, this phone is. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the video, we've got a Snapdragon 450 processor with 4 gigs of RAM. And I feel like, you know, th this particular package here, I feel like is what LG should have aimed for with the Stylo 4. You know, because the Stylo 4, I mean, you know, it's a big phone, you know, also has the Snapdragon 450 processor, but it only has 2 gigs of RAM in it. And I think that the phone suffers because of the amount of gigs of RAM that's in it. I think that having an additional gig or two of RAM would definitely have paid dividends as far as that phone's overall performance. I'm not saying that it's a bad phone, but I'm just saying that I think that the phone could have been better. And it could be a lot more buttery smooth if it had more RAM to, to, to help along with the phone's overall performance. But we've got four gigs of RAM here in the Q7 Plus, um, coupled with that Snapdragon 450 processor. So um, things appear to be nice and smooth thus far. So let's just go ahead and go into the Google Suite and we'll just go ahead and pop open uh, Maps really quickly. And a lot of these apps I'm going into for the first time. So um, yeah, okay, Gmail, okay, got it. Just pops right into that, nice and snappy. Oh, here's Maps right here. All right, so it just pops right into that. Pop into YouTube. Okay, just taking a little bit for that to load up. I mean, YouTube is a big file, a lot of content. That's taking a little longer than I would have expected. Okay, we'll come back to that. Don't want to waste too much time on that. All right, but here is Google Drive. Okay, so you see it just pops right into that, and that's where a lot of your documents live. Here is the Play Store. Okay, so we'll hit no thank you. And go ahead and allow. Skip. And here is the Play Store. Okay. Google Play Movies. 
Okay, so it just pops right into Play Movies. Here's Google Duo. And this is just kind of like a Skype type of application. Kind of, sort of. Okay, Google Photos. Okay, and go ahead and allow that. Confirm pristine tech, which is I. All right, and a lot of these photos are just going to start to pop up and appear. Go ahead and get out of that. Google Docs. It pops right into that. It's another application where a lot of your documentations are, a lot of your documents are stored. Okay, spreadsheet, Google Slides. Pops right into that and Google Pay and so again there's another uh, indicator that we have NFC on board because if not then we would not have Google Pay now we'll go ahead and hit recents okay we do have multi window right there so open two apps at once by tapping this little icon or two recent apps okay and as you can see RAM management seems to be pretty solid okay now we we'll just go ahead and pop right back into Gmail all right, let's pop back in the maps, see how long it takes to load that back up. Okay, beat the traffic wherever you go. Okay, definitely want to do that because there is a lot of congestion here in Seattle, Washington. All right, go back to Google. So you see it has to reload the page, but thankfully it didn't take too long in order for it to do that. All right, pop back in the recents. Okay, Google Drive. Okay, just pops right back into that. Go to that Google Play Movies. Okay, that has to load back up. But again, that took took a couple of seconds. I mean, so that's not really a big deal. So I mean, you guys get the idea overall. I mean, I think overall RAM management uh, appears to be pretty solid thus far on this particular device. Um, I think one thing that one thing to be mindful of. Um, not to say that this processor couldn't handle some of the more graphically intense heavy games, but I would anticipate there being you know a little more stutter or lag, or depending on what you're doing and how much is going on on the screen at a time, then you may run into some choppiness or some stutters or maybe even some freezes. Um, but um, that that's yet to be determined. I'll definitely test that out. But again, I mean, this is the Snapdragon 450 processor, so definitely not as powerful as the Snapdragon. You know, 845, the 835, the 636, the Snapdragon 710, you know, the, I, you can't really expect for this processor to perform as well as those processors do. But nonetheless, I mean, just for your, your average everyday normal day-to-day -day task, I mean, web browsing, calls, text, little social media here and there, this processor is going to handle that with absolutely no problems whatsoever, okay? Okay. Um, and so things appear to be pretty solid thus far. Now let's go ahead and poke into the camera application really quickly. And okay, so we'll keep it on the four by three aspect ratio for the moment. Tag photos, nope, we'll do that later. Okay. And so there's your clarification right there. We do have Q lens. And so, um, let's see, what is something colored here? my little time glass all right take a quick picture of that okay as so again we've got a primary 16 megapixel shooter all right and let's just go ahead and use gallery and that's a pretty nice looking photo my little hourglass I mean so when you turn it and it's about a half hour from sand to go from one side to the other and so that's a pretty clean looking photo right there, very crisp and detail oriented. And, you do, and as you saw, we do have the little settings right there. We can go and tweak photos and stuff after the photo's been taken. So let's go ahead and scroll around to that 8 megapixel front facing camera here. I'll go ahead and just take a quick selfie of myself. Okay. And yes, let's use the, galax, uh, the gallery. And clean looking photo again, eight megapixel selfie cam. Um, things appear to be this. This camera looks pretty promising. Um, so yeah, I mean it's good to see that they went with an eight megapixel shooter here on the front as opposed to the five that was on the Stylo Four. Um, I would have thought that in the Stylo Four would have had an eight megapixel selfie camera, but for whatever reason it did not. 
And so, I mean, I'm not trying to bash that phone, you guys. I just, I just wish that it would have been marketed a little bit more towards the mid-range or mid-range flagship tier devices. You know what I mean? Not necessarily a budget device, but at the same time, you got to be mindful of the people that, you know, are either on a budget and can't afford to rock with a lot of those more premium devices or for the people that do, but they just can't really fathom spending a whole bunch of money on a phone because at the end of the day, it's still a phone. And as long as you can talk and text and do a little bit of browsing here and there, that seems to be what a lot of people are, are, are concerned about and have decent camera functionality. And this definitely seems to have that without a doubt. And so um, you do, we see that right there. We do have portrait mode right there. And then we have Q lens. We've got the, the beauty mode right there, and then if we uh, click on that little button right there, here's a bunch of the little features, or filters, I mean, that you can kind of change up the color schemes and things of that nature. You just tap on that just to go ahead and get rid of that. Now, we pop into the settings. You see we've got selfie shot, save as flipped, HDR, creative view, voice shutter, tag locations, add signature, which is pretty dope. And then you got help, and then you can see down at the bottom here, we've got full vision, this is where you can change it, change the aspect ratio so you can change it. Um, when you go to full vision, then you've got the whole 5.5 inch screen as your viewfinder. Okay. And to get out of that, we just go ahead and click full vision off and it goes back to the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Okay. And so here under 4 by 3, you can see we can change it to 16 by 9, 18 by 9, or 1 by, uh, 1. By 1. And for recording, we've got full HD at uh, 1920, 1080. We've got HD at 18 by 9 aspect ratio, 1440 by 720. And then we've got HD 16 by 9 at 1280 by 720. There's no 4K recording on this particular device. And then here we have the timer, which is definitely a nice feature. The different modes that we've got here, we've got auto mode, match shot, We've got guide shot, what's that there? Snapshot, grid shot, and jump flash cut. And so those are the different settings that you've got to rock with. And then here at the top uh, right, that is our flash. That's where you can turn the flash on or off if need be. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the LG Q7 Plus. Um, I saw this in the T-Mobile store actually about two weeks ago, and I was pretty intrigued by it. You know, it just came out of nowhere. I didn't hear anything about it, and you know, I keep my ears to the streets, and a lot of the applications and information-based uh, uh, um, sources for a lot of phone releases. Um, I'm, I'm very, very pumped about T-Mobile signing um, an agreement or a contract with OnePlus, and so the OnePlus 6T is going to be sold exclusively at T-Mobile come October, so I'm very psyched about that. I mean, it's good that we're going to have a U.S.-based carrier that's going to be carrying the, the OnePlus 6T in store, um, so definitely looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, so it's like T-Mobile is doing some things, you know what I mean? Um, but like Verizon, I mean, you know, they got the Z3 here exclusively. They got the Red Hydrogen 1 that's going to be coming out exclusively pretty soon. I mean, so a lot of things to look forward to. So make sure you guys keep it locked here at Pristine Mobile Tech. All right. So again, that's all the information that I currently have at the moment for the new LG Q7 Plus. If you like this video, please smash that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of more videos that I've done like this one. And definitely keep it locked because I've got so much more content to come. Be sure to hit that notification bell so that whenever I upload content, you can be the first to view the content and voice your feedback, questions, or concerns. And I'll be sure to contact you as soon as I possibly can. And thank you guys for tuning in. Much love to all of my subscribers. Those of you that have been rocking with me for a minute, much love. I appreciate it. Those are the newcomers. I appreciate your subscription. I thank you for subscribing, and I hope to continue to get my hands on these devices and provide you with the information that you want on these smartphones to help you make an informed decision on what your next smartphone purchase may be. That's what I do this all for. So again, this is the new LG Q7 Plus. I'm your man, Pristine, bringing the content. You guys already know, keep it safe. Get spiritually fit in 2018. We're definitely living in the last days. And keep it pristine in everything that you do. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.